Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm Don Walters, and welcome to Country Lanes. And this, our 13th annual Staten Island Singles Classic, a Staten Island bowling tradition. This year, a new record was set here at Country Lanes with the Singles Classic. In the 13-year history, this is a year that we drew the most entries ever. A record number of bowlers turned out to this event to the number of 560. And as a result, 56 spots were paid out with a cut score of 675. First place money, which was guaranteed at $1,200, has been escalated to $1,350. And I have with me right now, ladies and gentlemen, our 16 finalists. And we're going to take a few minutes and we're going to meet those 16 finalists in the first round of competition. To my right is a first time finalist with the Staten Island Singles Classic. This man is the only lefty in the field of 16 finalists today. He bowls out of Bowling on a Green. He has one title to his name. He won the New Year's Singles Classic back in 1988. And his opponent is to my left. Jeff, move in a little, please. This is the youngest in the field of 16 finalists. He's a house bowler here at Country Lanes. He's one of the up-and-coming young Lions. And he is a right-hander, and he is Jeff Charest. Jeff, I have a question for you. Your first opponent is the lone lefty in the field of 16, Ray Perillo. Uh, I don't want you to look by, by Ray, but how do you feel about today's competition? I feel I just got to go out and do my best, and what happens, happens. Okay. Jeff, I want to thank you for bowling. I wish you the best of luck today. Ray, same question to you. You're a left-handed bowler. You're the only lefty. Does that put you at an advantage or a disadvantage? You have to bowl. You have to bowl to win. So it doesn't matter if you're lefty or righty. You make your own shot. Okay, Ray, again, thank you for being here. Best of luck thank in today's you. competition. Okay, the next set of competitors. We have two bowlers that are in the finals for the first time here at Country Lanes. The man to my right, Monty Leppendorf, made the finals in the New Year's Classic at Bowling on a Green. And the man to my left is noted for something other than bowling. He goes by the name of Danny Harris, and he also has a moniker by the name of Duncan. Now, for you basketball fans, you know Duncan is the New Jersey Nets mascot. Danny, this is a little different than uh, putting on a suit and greeting the New Jersey Nets fans. Yes, it is. Uh, hopefully tonight I can just go out. I've been bowling good in league play. Hopefully I can go out and it'll carry over tonight. And I just want to bowl the best that I'm able to bowl. Danny, I wish you good luck. Thanks for being here. Monty, first-time finalist in this event. You made the uh, finals at Bowling on a Green. Hopefully some of that experience will be a learning experience and you'll carry it into today's competition. Well, I'm hoping to do my best, take one shot at a time, and uh, try to keep some pressure on. Go out there and bowl. Monty, good luck. Thanks for bowling. Thank you. My next two competitors are two veterans in this great game of 10 pins. The man to my right has been here before. This is his second finals with the Staten Island Singles Classic. He does have a Staten Island Bowling Club title to his event. And he goes by the name of Bobby Sack. Bobby's first opponent is a veteran of a lot of years with this great game. And he's an avid supporter of my Staten Island Bowling Club and certainly of the Staten Island Singles Classic. And that is Frankie Longo. Frankie, first appearance in the finals. What are your thoughts? Fantastic. I'm just proud that I made it. And I'm going to take one ball at a time. That's all. Well, Frank, I thank you for being here. I wish you the best of luck. Mr. Sack, you've been here before. This is your second finals. First finals, you lost your first game. You walked home with $210. You're going to do anything different today? I just concentrate a little more. Last time, I think I was caught up with being a first-time finalist. And I think now I'm more experienced, and I'm, uh, I'm ready to bowl a lot better. Thank you, Bobby. Best of bowling. Good luck to both of you. Our next two competitors, a man to my right, has been tabbed by my co-host, who, we'll, who we'll meet in a minute, Bobby Simonelli, as a premier bowler on Staten Island. He was in the finals once before, way back in 1979. He waited a whole decade to come back to this point. He has career earnings of $440, and he is Bobby Spallone. His opponent is a man with the highest handicap in today's finalists, and he's a house bowler. He bowls out of country lanes, and he goes by the name of Pat Rourke. Pat, how you feeling? Uh, it's going to be hard beating these guys. 
especially Bobby. He's very good. Well, we'll see how the chips fall. Thanks for bowling. Good luck. Mr. Spallone, I hope Mr. Simonelli didn't put any pressure on you with that remark that he quoted on our last cable cast. Uh, <laughs> he, he put a little pressure on me. I'm just, I'm just going to have fun today. I'm glad I'm here. Uh, the toughest thing is to make it here, the top 16. Yes. Yes. And uh, I'm just going to go out there and have fun. Bobby, the best of bowling. Thanks for bowling. Good luck to both of you. Good luck. Our next two opponents are two more first-time finalists with the Staten Island Singles Classic. And it seems every year that one young lady sneaks into the finals. And we're going to meet her in just one very short minute. To my right is a first-time finalist. He bowls out of Showplace Bowling Center. And he goes by the name of Manny Dyson. Manny's opponent is going to be the young lady to my left, who I understand throws one heck of a bowling ball. She, too, bowls out of Showplace Bowling Center. And she is Donna Augusto. Donna, any pressure on you for being the only female? Yes. <laughs> but you're going to give it the best shot you have, and hopefully it'll, it'll win a couple of games for you. Yes. I wish you good luck. Thank you for bowling. Manny, how do you feel? Uh, you feel confident today? Uh, I feel pretty good. I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a go. Okay, I thank both of you for bowling. The best of luck. In the next match that you'll be watching is going to be a very competitive match. I have to my right the man who finished third place last year in this event. He took home $600 for his efforts. And that is Jimmy Oliveri. Now, Jimmy Oliveri is going to be bowling up against a record-tying individual. This man will be making his fifth appearance in this event over the course of 13 years. He has a match play record of one win and four losses and career earnings of $440. And I know he's looking to improve on that one in four match play record, Walter Palmer. Yes, I am. Uh, basically, he's going to keep the ball in play and keep clean and, and see where the chips fall. Okay, Walter, the best of luck. Good bowling. Jimmy, your uh, thoughts? Well, I'm happy to be here. The qualifying was tough, and uh, Walter's been teasing me about spotting him, so let's just go out and have a good match. Gentlemen, the best of bowling. Good luck, and thank you both. Our next two competitors for the first game of competition. To my right is a man that bowls at a showplace bowling center. He is a first time finalist in this event, Angelo Falacaro. To my left, another first time finalist in this competition. And this is one of the many sons of my co-host, Bobby Simonelli. This son is called Steven. Steven, first time finalist, how do you feel? I feel if I could just go out and make my spares, keep the game clean, it'll be a good, you know, we'll have a good match. Okay, Stephen, thanks for bowling. Best of luck. Angelo Falacaro, what are your thoughts? Well, Don, it's my first uh, finals ever in this house, so I'm just happy to be here and um, go out and bowl. Let's best see I what could. happens. Gentlemen, thanks for bowling. Best of luck. The final two bowlers of the top 16 that will be going head-to-head -head in their first match. To my right, this man is a winner in his own right. He took the crown at Sunset Lanes this year with the Staten Island Bowling Club. That was worth $1,000. He is, however, a first-time finalist in this event. And he goes by the name of George Chicola Sr. And his first opponent is a face that I'm sure all Country Lanes bowlers are familiar with. This man is looking to become the first two-time winner of this very prestigious event here at Country Lanes. He won this tournament back in 1988. He made the finals last year. And here he is again today for the third consecutive year, and he is Rob Vinci. <laughs> Rob, sounds to me like you might be the hometown crowd. Well, I'm just going to do the best I can, see what happens. Hopefully you'll add a second jewel to your crown. Sure. Rob, thanks for bowling. Best of luck. George, you got your feet, your feet wet at Sunset Lanes with the bowling club as far as your TV exposure is concerned. Um, are you still nervous, or...? Well, you know, Rob has got the credentials, and naturally you feel a little uh, intimidation. But I'm very proud that uh, I'm one of 16 out of 560. Yes. I'm glad to be here, and I'm out to have some fun. Gentlemen, thank you. Best of bowling. Ladies and gentlemen, there you see our top 16 finalists for today's competition. Before we go any farther and get into match play competition, 
How about a nice country lanes round of applause for my co-host, Bobby Simonelli. Bobby's engaged in conversation right now. He's making his way. He always needed a special invitation, so why should today be any different? Hello, Rob. Welcome to Country Lanes and a Staten Island Singles Classic 13th Annual. Well, I'm not going to make any picks, Donnie, because I bowled in the tournament myself. Yes, you did. Conditions were fair on both sides, left side, right side. I look at the field all the way down the line. I think we got mostly, all of them are premier bowlers. We have a great girl bowler that's done nothing but knock them dead here at Country Lanes. We got Bob Spallone, one of the premier bowlers in the house. We got Bobby Sachs. Bobby Sachs. We got our friend uh, Walter Palmer, mm -hmm. who's made just about every tournament we've ever yes. been in. Yes. And he's always come through in the finals. I mean, we could go on forever with Jimmy Oliveri and uh, Angelo Falcaro and the rest of them. They're just yes. great bowlers yes. and no picks. Okay. No picks at all, Donnie. Okay, so we'll just we'll get on with competition, and um, we'll be back a little bit later on with the championship match. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back at Country Lanes with the 13th Annual Staten Island Singles Classic. But before we go on with the competition for this month's event, I'm now going to turn the microphone over to my co-host, Bobby Simonelli, and he has a special guest with him, for this month's 10-pin tip. Bobby? Thank you, Donnie. Well, my special guest this month is none other than famous Ray Lawson from Country Lanes, who is the house pro at Country Lanes. And also, he drills the bowling balls for the people out there on the lanes. Now, both Ray and I have been in this business for quite a long time. And in a, in a little way, I'm glad, Ray, that I'm phasing out of the business and I'm into the bowling center now. But we have different questions that come into us, and I think one of the most famous questions, as Ray will uh, reiterate, is when a guy comes in, Ray, and he says, hey, Ray, I'm out there bowling in the league, and my ball isn't hooking. How about drilling me up something that's going to go long down the lane and come from the back end and knock those pins to holy heck? Can we do it, Ray? Well, you can make a ball hook or not hook by different ball surfaces, but the type of ball that the person wants where the ball goes long down the lane and snaps up in the back. That's done with technique and wrist movement, and the ball can't do that. The bowler has to do that. Uh, no matter what you do to the ball, the, you can buy a ball that's going to hook, but it's not going to get the reaction the bowler's looking for, not without a lot of practice and a lot of good technique. Now, we have a lot of viewers out there that are listening to Ray, and the one thing you have to remember is that the release is the key to good bowling and a straight wrist and a firm wrist. Now. Being that we're in Ray's shop, why don't we go over some things that has to be done when a customer comes in and he's purchasing a bowling ball. You're going to see it's much different than walking into a department store or a sporting goods store and having someone say, gee, is that hole feel good? Is this okay? Is that okay? In the pro shop, there's more technique. When Ray or myself have to measure someone, we allow a little leeway to open up the ball later as the bowler starts to bowl instead of just making a big thumb hole and then he goes out and he just drops the ball on onto his toe and someone will turn around and say, gee, where'd you buy that ball? And Ray can, uh, can also say that he takes great pride in his customer and he treats every customer as a pro bowler and that's very important when you walk into the pro shop. Now, Ray, let's go over the, the, the drill press itself. Uh, we have all these drills, and we have to set up a ball. Ray, how do you work these gadgets over here? I know myself, but our viewers aren't familiar with that, the different pitches that have to go into right. a person's bowling ball. Okay, well, this thing we have over here that we turn with, this moves the drill jig back and forth, okay? That's for the forward and reverse thumb pitches on a ball or finger pitches, okay? We move it back and forth, and that changes the pitches in the ball. This one over here moves it lateral, right or left, to go under the palm, away from the palm, the fingers this way or the fingers that way. Uh, it's a very important part of bowling, very important. Now, what Ray is saying with these pitches that he's pointing out is that a lefty and a righty, they're different pitches if you're a left-hander and if you're a right-hander. So when you come into the pro shop, the pro knows. When he asks you for your hand, you give him your left hand, he'll know what type of pitch to put into your thumb hole and into your fingers. Then we have, Ray, the measuring ball itself which is over here. Can we explain to the audience the measuring ball, how it works? This, 
this is what we measure the spans with. We have different thumb hole sizes over here and finger hole sizes. We measure each person differently. We try and get a good snug fit as we're measuring the ball. This one's a little bit too tight. Okay, we can get in here. Okay, you put it in here. You put the thumb in here, the length out over here. You get a good fit in here. You see the way the person's hand sitting in the ball and you go from there. That's for the span. Okay. And then there's after that, there's other stuff too. Well, let me just give our viewers another tip. When you walk into the pro shop, listen to the pro. Because many people walk into a pro shop and when the pro fits them, they'll say, that hole is too tight. It's not too tight. Let the pro do his work. Let him fit you the right way. Gee, that span feels like it's wide. I'd like to be very close. Well, it's a true thing that the close span does feel comfortable, but let me tell you something. Once you go out on those lanes and that span is too short, you're in trouble. But we have guys like Ray Lawson to help you guys and to help you ladies pick out the right equipment. Now, Ray, let's go over to these bowling balls. I see we have a wide variety and a wide selection of different type bowling balls. Can we explain it to the audience? Yeah, well, there's balls for every different bowler. We have uh, the lower priced balls over here, the plastic balls. Uh, most of these go from 6 to 12 pounds. They're for kids or for beginners, women bowlers. Uh, they're interested in color more than the performance of the bowling ball. Uh, we get up into here into the Columbia White Dots. There's a harder shell plastic ball for a medium bowler that's just starting out, maybe doesn't want to go into a big urethane ball. Uh, then over here, here's all the high performance balls. Okay, Hammers, there's four different types of hammers. There's Cobras. Uh, the way they're set up is the duller and really the uglier they look, the more the ball is going to hook, the more it's going to uh, compensate for the oil on the lanes. And the shinier they are, the, the less they're going to hook. Uh, the urethane balls do give you a lot better hit. They do, the, the pins do react to the urethane a, a lot better than they do the plastic. Ray, I also noticed we have Don Johnson's Pro Guide to Better Bowling, Volume 2 and Volume 1. We also have Maximum Bowling by Marshall Holman. So we have an equipped pro shop here. And I want you to think of something, viewers, that with all these different bowling balls here, you think you could come out and pick out the right ball? I don't think so. That's why you need pros. That's why there are guys like Ray Lawson around to help you pick out your different bowling balls. So just remember, the next time you walk into a pro shop, when the guy grabs your hand, let him be the boss. Let him determine what's best for you. Let him help you pick out the bowling ball, the shoes, and the bag. And down the line, you're going to be a very happy bowler. And as you get to be a more progressed bowler, you come back into the pro shop, and Ray Lawson will help you progress just like any other pro will. Thank you for joining us at Ray Lawson's Pro Shop at Country Lanes. Okay, Bobby, we're back here at Country Lanes with uh, our finishers that finished 9th through 16th for the Staten Island Singles Classic. Ninth place this month belongs to a first-time finalist, Monty Lependorf. Nice bowling, Monty. Uh, Congratulations. We'll see you next year. Monty, thanks for bowling. I know you had a tough competitor in the first game. Um, what happened? He was tough. He kept the uh, pressure on. He Who threw, did you bowl, by the way? Uh, Dan Harris. He uh, threw like five in a row against me, kept it tight, and uh, just did the best I could. Threw a few and uh, wound up at a 196. Well, you had a good effort. You had $180 for your effort. I thank you. Hope to see you again. Thank you. Thanks for bowling, Monty. Tenth place this year belongs to a man. First time finalist in the event, George Chocola Sr. Congratulations, George. Tenth place, $170. Georgie, thanks for bowling. It's not a thousand for his sunset. You also had a tough match in your first round. Sure did. Uh, mm. Maybe next month will be your month. Came across a buzz saw tonight. Mm. Yes. The man was throwing bullets. Glad to be here. Thanks, thanks George. George. Thanks for bowling. Eleventh place, Bobby, worth $160. One of the newcomers, Patty Rourke. Here you go, Patty. Thank you, Mr. You Rourke. Gold chain for that. Yeah, no. You bowled Mr. Spallone the first game. Yeah, he's a great competitor. He, he does throw crit. bullets. Yeah, he's just throwing them at me one after another. No Five shame in a row. to lose to him. No nope. shame at all. He's good. Thanks for bowling, Thank Patty. You. And for 12th, we have the prettiest finals of all. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. What's that worth, Bobby? 
$150 for 12 plays. Our lone female, Donna Augusto. Donna, I want to thank you for bowling. Thank you. Your first match you bowled who? Manny Dizon. And it was a close match, though. Close, like four pins. pins and, uh, hopefully next time will be your time. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Donna. 13th place coming up, Donnie. $140 to Look my good is. friend Frankie Longo Sr. The best. The best. Doing, Frankie, Bye. thank you, buddy. Congratulations, Frank. Thank you. Thank you. you. You know, Bobby, um, I, I hate to say this because, you know, we both love Frankie, but I watched that match with Bobby Sack. Yeah, well, you let him get away. I threw a split in the pen frame and it cost me. <laughs> yes, it'll come back and haunt you. Yes, it will. Thanks for bowling, Frankie. Hope Take to care. see you again. You too. Thank you. Well, 14th place for $130, we have what can my we say friend about this and your guy? friend, Walter Palmer. But you know, the good news, Walter, congratulations are in order, because you just set a record with the singles classic. You're the only guy to lose five final playoffs. Well, uh, uh, considering I'm going to school four nights, I did better than I expected to do this year. I'm only bowling in one league, I'm bowling three games a week, so it was like to, to qualify was was an you achievement. Lost, you lost to a tough man. Jimmy Walter, Oliver. remember one thing. You make it every year. These That's guys right. don't. So you're doing something right. You know, got to get you over that hurdle. I you just won't ball too hard. Yet. You watch. I won a Walt tournament. He's already won a tournament. He won this a year. KBC event. Uh, KBC I know. tournament. I know. For how much money? Walt? It was uh, $3,000. $3,000. That's great, Walter. Nice shoot. Thanks, buddy. I just want to ball too hard for the condition. Jimmy Oliveri is still bowling, by the way. He's the one that knocked Walter out of competition. 15th place is the only lefty, and I guess he's not a survivor this month anyway, although he does have a title. He won the New Year Singles Classic in 1888, and he, Bobby, as you know, was one of the proprietors at Rab's Bowling on a Green. I lied, 89. I'm making him a year older, Ray Perillo. Ray, 15th place, $120. Thanks, buddy. Ray, all of the things that are coming at the Advance, you're doing a great job over at the Green. Thank you. And we will be at the Green in September. in September with the club. And are you bowling, Ray, in that tournament? I, I bowl in every tournament. He's looking at me with a question in his mind. I love it. Ray, nice um, kid, Ray. Jeff Charest beat you, the kid. Yeah, we had a tough pair. Yes. Uh, I hit strikes on, on lane two. I couldn't hit lane one. It's, it's yeah, you got to hit two lanes in this game. Yes. And otherwise, uh, if I made the spare, I would have beat him too. Tough break. Tough break. Thanks for bowling, Ray. Bowling Always a pleasure, buddy. Listen, for this last guy, I'm just going to turn the mic over to you. You do what you got to do. Well, I have to give him a check for 16th place for $110 to my son, Stephen Simonelli, who finished last in the finals. Steve, congratulations. Steve, stay here just a second. See, Stephen hasn't been doing his homework. So you can't just get out there and bowl without practicing. And perhaps next year, Stephen will do some practicing and maybe he could finish a little high in 16th. What do you have to say about that, Steve, now that I have you on video camera? You're right about that. I'll be back next year, and I ain't going to you know, finish higher than 16th is right. Okay. Staten Island Bowlers, that concludes our eight finalists that didn't make it. Now let's get back to Donnie Walters. Okay, Bobby, we're back, and we have with us the bowlers that finished fifth through eighth place in this well, month's event. Surprise to me is my friend Rob Vinci. He finished eighth for two hundred and fifty dollars, but he was there again. Yes. And he was picked by a lot of locals to be the guy to compete with. Let's ask for Rob what happened. Hey Rob, you, you ran into a bus a young kid Jeff Charay, and this now means that you're not gonna be the first man to win this thing twice. That's not true. But this year anyway. Okay. Well, anyway, he bowled good. I missed two spares, you don't do that in a tournament. But you know it's always next year. Eighth place. I'm sure I'll make it again. Ain't bad at all. Thanks. Thanks for bowling. Thanks a lot. See you in Vegas. Always a pleasure, buddy. Yeah. Huh? Okay. See you in Vegas. All right. Seventh all right. place is who, Bobby? Two hundred and seventy-five dollars for Bobby Sachs. Bobby Sachs been around a long time. Yes. He was my pick. Thank you. I don't let anyone know about it, but I was talking in the background well. to one of our bowlers, and he didn't let me down because he's always there. Yes. Just like Rob Vinci, another yes. good scratch bowler. Rob, I have one thought also, and I had a feeling when you snuck by Frankie Longo in the first game, that was going to be the stepping stone for you, but that wasn't meant to be. Well, I had a few raps in there, but then he threw the ball really well. He had like four or five in a row, and I just, uh, I just couldn't catch him. He got too much of a lead, and I tried. Uh, tough to play catch-up. It's tough. It's yes. tough only one game. Yes, it is. But a pleasure as always, Rob. Bob, thanks a lot. Thank you, Bob. 
Well, sixth place for three hundred dollars. I have a favorite. Yeah, I love yeah. Pepsi Cola, and this guy delivers the Pepsi yes, Cola. Yes. Him and his brother, since they've been on hey, Staten Island, he delivered made, today, right? Right, and and they've been making quite a name for themselves yes, on Staten Island. Yes. But he promised me he's coming back to Rainbow Lanes, moving back to Brooklyn, moving off Staten Island, and Angelo picked up sixth place, three hundred bucks. That ain't hey, great Angela. shooting, Angelo. Always a pleasure, my friend. Angelo, you lost to who in your semifinal? Jim Oliveri. And, and he's out there now. Yeah. It was a good match to the end. A few temp pins. I didn't adjust right away. I lost a lot of wood, a lot of count. And he I'd won. Like to make a little note on that, Donnie. Jim Oliveri also came from Brooklyn and bowled out of Shell Lanes. So oh, these wow. guys are very familiar with each oh, other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're all good bowlers, Hank, Angelo, and Jimmy. We'll see him again next year, okay. Thanks nice again, Ange. Good bowling, buddy. Now we have our fifth, fifth place. place finished for $325. 325 nice numbers. Nice numbers, nice young man. It bowls at a showplace bowling center. And I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name. Come well, in. he knows I get it wrong anyway, but he always forgives me. Manny Dyson. Dizon. See what I tell you. Dizon. See? <laughs> is, that, is that Filipino? Or? Yes, I'm Filipino. It is. You know Bong Koo from the Philippines? Uh, no, no. You don't. don't know Bong Koo is one of your premier bowlers from the Philippines. Finished second in the World's Open. So I would check Bong Koo out. Some bowler. <laughs> Congratulations Thank for you a very fifth much. place. Manny, you lost to who? I lost to Bobby Spallone. And why? Uh, he, he put the strikes together, and I, I just didn't. I didn't. I couldn't get them together, and, and he beat me really good. Gave me a weapon. Tough. He's tough. <laughs> he's a good he's, he's out there bowling the kid. He's bowling Danny Harris right now, Bobby. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. And wait till next year. You'll be back. Thank you very Thanks much. again, Manny. Thank very you. much. Okay, Bobby, we got four bowlers left. We got Danny Harris bowling against Bobby Spallone, and we got the young kid, Jeff Chere. He's bowling Mr. Jimmy Oliveri. Well, what do you we think? Have two scratch bowlers. Two handicap bowlers. I think it's going to be kind of tough to pick anyone at this moment. Spallone is spotting 30 pins. Yeah, yeah. And I think on the other side with Jeff and Jim, it's a matter of four pins. Four or five pins. It's so close. I it's think close. we're going to wait and see, and as soon as they finish, we're going to go down on the lanes, and I'm going to point out to the viewers what the winning bowler is going to have to do to win. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, with that, we'll get back to some competition. Bobby, we are now back with our championship game, but before we get into that, let's take care of some business. Fourth place this year belongs to the same man that finished third last year. He got just as far, but not any farther. Fourth place worth $525. How about a nice round of applause for Jimmy Oliveri? Thank you. Always a pleasure, Jimmy. Thank you very much. Jimmy, not Thanks, for nothing, Donald. but since we've been back on the island you've been making quite a bit of quite a bit of tournaments you've been finishing up in the top you you surprised everyone by being here today because you did have an injury you want to tell the people what happened to you this way if anything happens to them maybe they could sort the same kind of advice yeah, uh, that you got i got a little bout of tendonitis and uh it's no fun to bowl with i got a shot back in february and uh it's not really damaging the arm any further because i wear that uh wristband and this surgical thing they gave me but uh, it's fun to be able to compete and bowl and uh, no shame losing to uh, Jeff Charest. Last year I lost to George Cortella and I had two bang bang matches earlier and I'm very proud of the way I bowled. Well you're in prime company. Thanks for bowling Jim. We'll see you next pleasure, year. Jim. Thanks, okay Bobby third place this year is somewhat of a surprise. He took a night off from his job with the New Jersey Nets. Third place upstart Danny Harris. Also known as Duncan. Danny, third place, buddy. Outstanding effort. Thanks. I'm um, happy. I, I bowled good the first two games, and uh, Bob just bowled eight in a row. He deserves to win. Anybody finishes with eight in a row, he finished that strong. He deserves to win the game. I'm just happy I got as far as I got. I really didn't expect even to get out of the first round. But thanks a lot. Thanks. You put on a great show. No shame losing to a guy like Bobby Spallone. That's for sure. Third place, $625, and you bowled great, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate again, you. Danny. Okay, Rob, before we get on to our championship match, we have a special guest that has graced us with his presence. And I'm going to ask everybody to give a nice round of applause to the proprietor here at Country Lanes, Guido Passarella.
And keep being true to his promise. He promised me he'd be here between us. And here he is. Guido. I have to ask you some questions. First of all, both of us being Italian, I'm proud of Italians that do what you have done, especially for different types of cancer funds and muscular dystrophy. Do you have any idea how much money your bowlers and you have contributed over the years to these charities? I don't believe that the bowlers and the viewers that are watching realize what goes on with the proprietor and with the bowling center. And not only that, viewers, but Guido is also one of the premier home builders in Staten Island. If you'd ever need a home build, Guido's the man to see. Not only did he build homes for all the people that came over from Queens and Brooklyn, but we have a recreation center. And from what I understand, Guido, we may be in for another center that may be opening up soon on the other side of Staten Island. Is there anything you'd like to say to our people that are watching? Oh, yes. Co Colonial Lane will reopen at the end of July. And uh, we'll have automatic scores and brand new facility. And we'll keep our race fund for American Kent Society and muscular dystrophy and whatever is needed for the people of Staten Island. Guido, I'd like to say this from the bottom of my heart, that you have an enormous big heart for everything you have done for the bowlers on Staten Island and for the people who live here and for those poor people that have been handicapped. You don't know what that charity work has done in their eyes. And I wish you nothing but the best. And I know you're going to come through for the Staten Islanders with Colonial Lanes. And I can only assure these people that are watching that Country Lanes is going to be around for a long, long time. You said it. Be around for a long, long time. And we will raise money for people for a long, long time. Thanks for the bowls of Staten Island that they really work with me. Without them, I wouldn't do anything. Guido, it's been very nice. Thank you. And Guido, Bobby's going to be on hand to present the champion's trophy to we, today's winner. We were going to ask you for a pick. We have Bob Spallone and Jeff Shear, but I hate to put you <laughs> into that predicament being a proprietor, Guido. So we'll just leave it as it is and may the best man win. And you are the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Guido Passarella, proprietor, Country Lanes. Okay, Bobby, before we start our final match, I'm going to turn the mic over to you for your commentary. Okay. Well, we're going to be going to lanes 15 and 16, and we're going to watch Bob Spallone, a high average bowler on Staten Island against a young phenomenon, Jeff Scher. Jeff Scher is only 16 years of age, and I believe this is the first time he's going to go through a match like we're going to have today. Bob Spallone, well, he's been through quite a bit, bit of matches in the past. Some of them tough, some of them he's won, some of them he's lost. He'll know how to handle the pressure. But before we do this, I'd like to point something out to our viewers here, especially the people that are watching on the telecast, that both bowlers, in order to win today, are going to have to place the ball between the first arrow and the edge, which this could be a danger zone because if the bowler misses his target, he could very well wind up in the channel. Now, outside the five board, the boards are very dry. Five and in, they're very wet. Now, what does this mean to a bowler? If he hits that wet oil going out, he could wind up with a washout. If he hits the dry too early, he could wind up going through the beak and leaving up a split. Both bowlers are very well lined up. Jeff Scher just rolled a 232 game in the semifinals. Bob Spallone at 249. Both bowlers will be bowling scratch. Now the idea between both of them, and I'd like you to watch this during the telecast, you will see both shoulders on both bowlers will be lined up and they will be going up the forward board on the lane, directing the ball up into the oil, starting in the dry, getting the ball to hold back. The bowler that does this, the best out of 10 frames, will be our new Staten Island Classic singles champion. Let's go on now to the final match and meet these two fabulous bowlers. And I can't help but wonder, it's a handicap tournament, and yet it comes down to the two scratch bowlers. Well, they paid their money like everyone else, Donnie, and they had to overcome the odds of giving the handicap. And both of them bowl here at Country Lanes, Bob Spallone and Jeff, and I think we're going to see a very, very close match unless someone 
Start stringing right away early in the match. Spallone just threw the ball a little high. He's coming in from the outside angle, going up into the oil, and the ball is setting back. Now, going cross lane, he's got to direct his ball with speed. Because with the, with the short oil, the ball will have a tendency to get away going to the left side. Now, Bobby, let me ask you a question. Bobby Spallone chose to start. Now, how is that going to affect him? I don't think it's going to affect either bowler down there. I think both of these bowlers are locked in on their game, and they're going to go out, and they're going to just try to bowl their game. They're not worried about finishing first or less. Ooh, wow. Say one thing about this young kid, Jeff Shear. He throws the ball like someone else I know. Who's that? A guy by the name of Gene George, but Gene was on the left side. You know, and he gave up bowling for two years. Yes, and he's back. He's for three years. Three years. He's back sitting alongside of me. What's he like, I wonder? Well, we'll get a little commentary from Gene later on into the match when it gets interesting. Right now, both bowlers start off with spares. What a ringing eight pin, though, Bobby, huh? And I'll tell you one thing, Donnie. Like when we're doing the Staten Island Bowling Club and we see the nervousness on the bowlers, neither one of these bowlers is showing any bit of being nervous. They're ready. They're fired up. And Jeff Scher is a young 16-year-old bowler with the new hairdo of Staten yes, Island. Yes, yes. My kids have him, too. It's Jeff Sheray. He trips the four-pin. A little high on that hit, Donnie. He pulled it up a little too much. Pulled it up a little too much, but he got away with it. Gives him 20 in a first with a strike up, and Spallone toes the line for frame number two with a spare up in the first. I'll tell you, he's going to have to beat Spallone early if he's going to beat him because when it comes down to the nitty-gritty of the 9th and 10 matches, Spallone is sure. tough. Well, you know, he's not going to beat himself, that's for sure. He's been around long enough. He's not going to beat himself. Spallone is playing the outside line, coming up into the pocket, and he catches a 10-pin wrap. Ball was a little weak then. It looked, weak like, it looked like it came a little around the pocket, Donnie. But you can look for Spallone to make some adjustments. What's he going to do now? He's going to throw the ball down further on the lane? Spallone is going to use a little speed going cross lane. Now, if he throws it out a little too far to the right, he could channel the ball. He's got it. No problem, whatever. So Bobby Spallone has two spares with 19 in the first, and Sheree right now has a slim one-pin lead after two. But he's working on a strike. Now, Spallone is going to come back to alley 15, where he left the four-pin his first, first frame. Well, he, on this shot, he's going to increase the speed. He's going to give it a little more speed, which he did. Got the ball down the lane, and he came up a little light, but carried the five. Yes. But you know, Bobby, in his house, is known for carrying light hits, and that's the line that Bobby Spallone is playing. Well, the house has phenolic pin decks. Pins bounce very easily when they're hit with the urethane bowling ball, so you get a lot of action. The scores show it, and the averages show it here at Country Lanes. Well, young Jeff working on a strike up in the third. A little bit of early pressure on Spallone with a strike. Right? He had that pop on his thumb. He pops right out of that wow. ball. A lot of fingers in the ball. Bobby, this kid is impressing me. He really is. When you're 16, Donnie, you don't think of anything else but what you're into, and right now that's bowling for young Jeff. Up to his eyeballs, I'll tell you that. Very impressive. He's very fearless. He really is not intimidated by anybody. Well, he's on lane 15. He struck in the second frame. He's on that outside shot going up the lane. Big break in the back end. And the crowd is letting you know what he's doing to those pins. Spallone is going to have to strike to stay with him now. Not really, Donnie. Spallone, all Sp like I said before in this center, all you have to do is stay in the game. Spallone has got to keep his head, stay in the game. Because at any time, he can break out with a string of four or five himself. He's been doing that all day in, in the semifinal action. It's a good delivery by Spallone. He's running it out, and he answered the call. So we have Spallone with a two-bagger in the third and fourth frame. Coming up in the fifth to answer the call of young Jeff. 
Bobby, first place is worth $1,350, and second place is going to take home $825. But the title is big, Donnie. The Absolutely. title is big. Staten Island Singles Classic Champion. Oh. And he got away with it. He got away with it. Wow. The last minute, pin rolled over and caught the 10-pin on the bottom, and the 10 oh, fell. He knew that he was in trouble when he delivered that ball. He was in the oil, and that ball just about made it up. He stole that one. Now, let's see what bearing that has on young Jeff Chirag. Listen to the pop out of his bowling ball. That's the suction when he's lifting the ball. He, one of his own. he had the five-pin dancing on that one, Donnie. Probably the crowd is really getting into this. Well, like I said, I said before in my commentary that if both of them stay out and direct the ball up, we're going to see a good match. And that's exactly what we're viewing. So on lane 15, here's the pop. And he delivers another strike. Spallone knows at this point he's got to answer young Jeff. He can't. Let him get away. Bobby, he's afraid to smile, the kid. He's afraid to crack a smile. It's not over yet, Donnie. I wouldn't smile either. Not at all. Not at all. Now, when you're facing a guy that's got high average in the house, Unbelievable. 226 average. And all of a sudden, Bobby, you hear a hush in the crowd. Spallone is deep in concentration. Well, he answers the call, Spallone. Spallone is back in the match. Donnie, we're going to have one of the most exciting matches we've had in a long time. What a match here at Country Lanes with the Staten Island Singles Classic. Handicap bowling at its best, right, Bob? Well, right now, <laughs> right now we have Bob Spallone taking his time. He's looking at his spot. He knows he has to make that delivery precisely. And it looks like he made it. And he did make it. And he's answering this call. This is one of the, I haven't seen Spallone bowling like this in years. He's in good competition against this young Jeff Sher. I hate to see somebody lose. Sheree, that's how we pronounce his name, Donnie. Jeff, Jeff Sheree. I hate to see somebody lose this match, Bobby, really. Jeff has taken his time. He's not wild at all, Donnie. He no. takes his time. He comes through the shot. And we have another strike by Jeff Sheree. I love Jeff's glove and his shirt. He's all in pink. And pink calms the savage beats. beast, Donnie. Right now, he's calming the pins to the tune of six in a row. Well, he's back on 15 again, and he's done nothing but strike on this particular lane. Let's see what he does up here in the eighth frame. And he left the seven. The five never made it over, Donnie. Once again, Donnie, Donnie, he came up a little short into the oil, and the ball did not make the finish that it did earlier. The five pin stopped short of taking out the seven. This is a big spare for him right here. It's a big spare because he has to keep his speed. And he he plays the dry going across and he converts to seven. Now we're going to see what Mr. Spallone does because he's in a good match. Bob Spallone up in the eighth frame on lane 16. He knows exactly what he has to do. Strike here, Bobby. Puts him in the lead. Just watch Spallone going back. He knows he had it. He knew he had it. He's in the midst now, Donnie. He's in the midst of the battle. Crowd is into it. The bowlers are into it. And we're getting into it. And what a crowd it is, Bobby. It's wall-to-wall -wall people here at Country Lane. Lane 15. Spallone's taking his time. He lets the ball out into the dry. And he carries the five. That was a very big delivery by Bob Spallone. 
as he blew the five out of the rack. I have never seen Bobby Spallone so animated as he is right now. Match isn't over, Donnie, because this young Jeff isn't giving up that easy. Pressure's on this young bowler from Staten Island on lean 16. Ow. Donnie, things like that will happen to you when you need it the most. The young fellow was going along, he was going along at a clip. He had the strikes, he caught a bad break on the seven pin. The five didn't take out the seven, and he got left with a solid 10. Threw a lot of speed at that 10, and he missed it. Donnie, he rushed the line, Donnie. He ran a little too quick to the line, and he blew the 10. Now I have to ask my teammate in the 80s from the Paramus Championship team with myself, Mark Roth, and Johnny Petraglia, what happened on that 10 pin? Gene, when he rushed that spare. He pulled up on his hand. He pulled up on the ball, and he delivers a strike. Being a young bowler, Gene, I guess it just got to him the pressure. Yeah, pressure the only way he could handle it was a little just... experience. He'll learn it in, in the future. Give the kid a few more years. Oh, this kid's going places. As long as he keeps his attitude about bowling and not fooling around with drugs and stuff like that. Stay drug free. That's the answer to good bowling for our youth. And this young boy is really exploding here, and he's showing these young bowlers that are in our view, cast the way to go. The straight road, not the crooked road. Okay, we're still in the match here. Young Jeff goes out for 247. Spallone at this point has seven in a row. He needs a mark. He needs all of the wood. He goes up the lane, he pulled through the shot, but he bowled great. His young bowler from Staten Island started out like a tiger. Started out great, but this match isn't over, Donnie. Any combination of bad wood and a miss by Spallone, we could have possibly a tie. Now, with that in mind, is Bobby Spallone looking to throw a strike or just an easy spare? Gene, what do you think's going through Spallone's mind? Watch you know, the pocket, knock everything down, first shot, end it fast. Well, tell by his actions after he delivers the ball. No, he's down on his knees. Solid ten for Spallone. Solid ten on Spallone, and that's enough. By one pin, by one pin, if he converts it, it's by 10, by 13. Let's see. Now notice Spallone shooting the 10 pin, even though the match is over. Slow feet, directing the ball right at the 10, and that's what caused our young bowl of the match. Well, we have a Staten Island Singles Classic champion, and Bob Spallone and Donnie, let me tell you, it's only fitting because this fella here in Staten Island had something to prove. Came over to Staten Island, took high average in the Sunday night mix. He's high average in the majors in Staten Island. And let me tell you something, he just became our Staten Island bowling singles classic champion all around in all categories. Let's have a nice hand for Bob Spallone and let's go out and meet our runner-up, Jeff We are back, and another Staten Island Singles Classic has come to an end. The 13th Annual Singles Classic, a Staten Island bowling tradition, and certainly a tradition, or a trend anyway, was set here today. A handicap event, two scratch bowlers went tooth and nail for 10 frames, and Bobby Spallone prevailed over up-and-coming young 16-year-old Jeff Charay. It was a heck of an exhibition by this youngster, and right now we're going to present him with third-place money so, how about a nice round of applause, Jeff Charest. In between us. Okay, we got Matty Acavelli with us here to present the money to this month's runner-up. Jeff, you talk about exhibitions, and I think we witnessed that in today's final. You are, without any doubt in my mind, the youngest runner-up in this event in the 13-year history. I know your heart is pounding, and well it should be. Second place between 560 bowlers is a Herculean effort. And I know Bobby Simonelli has a 
thought that he wants to pass on to you. Jeff, we know you're going to Vegas. You're going to compete in Vegas in the big tournament in Vegas. I think you're going to do very well. I've never seen you bowl before. You are a young tiger. As long as you remain calm and keep your composure, there's a future in the game. We mentioned the fact that our youth should stay away from drugs and stay on the straight road. And we know you're going to do that. And you're a fine example for all of the kids on Staten Island. And we're very proud of you. Jeff, I didn't know you too well. We talked this afternoon at a party briefly, and you said you were coming down here to win. And we spoke about you jumping out of the juniors so early. Well, you know what? You bowl just like a man and not like a child. Congratulations. Jeff, nothing to be ashamed of. Second place. What are your thoughts, kiddo? Well, since I lost, you know, it's a good feeling that I made it this far, but I'm glad I lost to somebody like Bobby Spallone. I'm glad I lost to somebody that, you know, that's good. You know, I bowled really good, you know, and he just bowled better. You know, there's nothing I can do about that. Well, I have to confess that you bowl with the poise, not becoming your age. Normally, the young, youngsters get a little shaken up, but you maintained your discipline, which was very important, with the exception of one ball that we talked about. Above and beyond that, you put on a great exhibition, and I know we're going to see a lot more Jeff Charest in the future. Thank you very much. Runner-up this month, Jeff Charest. Okay, before we bring up this year's winner to our event, we're going to ask the house proprietor Guido Passarello to step forward so that he can do the honors and present the trophy to this year's winner, Bobby Spallone. So take care of Guido. Get with Guido first. Guido. Bobby, you know, you've been my favorite for many years. I'm glad you won. Thank you, Bob. It's a trophy. Thank you, Guido. Uh, I want to thank uh, Donnie for running the tournament. It's a great tournament. I want to thank the uh, lane man because the shot was great. Uh, I, I just, I'm just happy to be here and uh, that I won this. It's, it's great. Uh, Jeff Charay bowled a great match. I tell you, it was. It was great. That's, I, that's all I can say. <laughs> I guess when you talk superlatives, that's the best one at the top of the list, right, Bobby? You got it. I've been looking to get this guy on television for quite a while, and I finally got him here today. I said in the telecast that you are the highest average bowler ever to bowl on Staten Island in two leagues at Country Lanes. He's a good bowler. He's a great bowler. He's been around since he's this little. I bowled with him when he was this little. He bowled against us. I knew his dad. I knew his mom. And I could root for anyone, but he knows where my heart was today. It was with Bobby Spallone. And I like to say that I've been watching him bowl for the last 20-some-odd years, and this is the best performance I've ever seen out of a bowler facing a young line in Jeff Charest, because this kid was definitely a line, and Spallone was in trouble. But he came back and he proved one thing. He is the Staten Island Bowling Classic champion. And I'm glad he's representing us Staten Islanders here on Staten Island. Congratulations, Bob. OK, Matty, you got some money for him? How much? Got, a, got some cash here for you, Bob, in the tune of $1,350. Congratulations. Thank you, Matty. And you know I'm with the Staten Island Bowl Club, and I hope to see you in Atlantic City on the 21st. I'll be there. <laughs> Bobby, I got one question for you. And I'd like to know what, if any, was the turning point in the match? Well, there were two turning points in the match. The lazy 10 I got in the fifth frame that kept me going on the string, and the 10 pin that Jeff missed. That was the two key, the two key frames. If I don't get that. That lazy 10 and he don't miss the spare, I'm, I'm not standing here. Okay, Bobby, I offer my congratulations. 13th winner, another year, another winner. We still are waiting for our first two-time winner. Perhaps next year you'll be in the same place with the same trophy and the same amount of cash. I just want to make one reminder to our viewers at home, Staten Island Bowling Club, Channel 24, 
Our time has been changed. We are now on on Sunday at 3.30, and that goes into effect the 6th of May. That's the first Sunday in May. You'll be watching us at 3.30 in the afternoon on Channel 24. I also want to just pass along a speedy recovery to two of our club members, and they are Murray Goldstein and Bernie Weissman. To the bowlers here at Country Lanes, I thank them for turning out and supporting our record-setting year. To Guido Passarella to being very, very consistent with the shot here at Country Lanes day in and day out. And to all you viewers for continually watching, we thank you very much and we hope to bring you more of the best in Staten Island bowling. Bobby, any closing thoughts? Well, the only thing I'd like to say is that it was a pleasure to be here watching this final match. It was a pleasure to finally interview Guido on TV because he's a man that he has to be reckoned with. People should know who he is because he's been in the background long enough and it's time for him to step forward. And I know Bobby Spallone bowling here at Country Lanes. He will represent Country Lanes and Mr. Guido. And he'll do it admirably. So bowlers, thank you very much. Viewers, thank you for watching. And that wraps up this month's event of the Staten Island Singles Classic, a Staten Island bowling tradition. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Don Walters welcoming you to another edition of the Staten Island Bowling Club. We're here at Sunset Lanes, and we're back to where it all started just four short years ago. We had a field of 170 bowlers this month. They took to the lanes, and we have narrowed the field down to our top eight bowlers, and they are currently in match play competition. And the winner of that event will advance to the Tournament of Champions representing Sunset Lanes. Our Tournament of Champions, as you know, takes place in November. First place prize money this month is worth $1,000. We've had a history of good turnouts here at Sunset Lanes, and again, this month was no exception to that rule. We have a little change this month, however. Unfortunately, this month I'm going to be working alone. My co-host, Bobby Simonelli, has not been feeling very well. So we're going to go solo today, and you know that we're going to speed him Wish him a speedy recovery and nothing but the best. So before we get into our actual championship game, I'm just going to introduce a few of the bowlers that finished in the competition for today's matches. This is Mr. Sonny Romano. Uh, Sonny is a first time finalist. Sonny, where did you finish today? Where did I finish? Yeah. 50. 16th or 15th. He's been like 16th that. place. He's a first time finalist. He's been with the bowling club since our Staten Island, since we started back in February of 88. And he's also one of my Sunday morning bowlers out at Country yeah. Lanes. Have a good time all the time. Uh, Sonny, you know we have eight bowlers left. Yeah. Uh, I, you finished 16th, which is not bad. And you consider we had a field of 170 bowlers. Yeah. Uh -huh. Who do you like out there, the eight bowlers we get left? Any favorites? Uh, gee, I don't know. Like this fellow bowling on, where the heck is he, on 11 or 12? Bobby Spallone. Yeah. Okay, Bob, Bobby Spallone. Bobby, is, uh, that's him. He's always a force to be reckoned with, right. and he gets minimal amount of wins, and he always seems to find some way to get there. He's one of these guys that knows how to win. Top seed. All right. the time. Top seed. He's All the good, time. Good bowling. Ball good today. Okay, Sonny, I want to... What I can say about myself. Well, <laughs> next month's another month. You know, yep. the Columbian Lanes next We try next again. Month. We look forward to seeing you there. Okay, Donnie. And I thank you for bowling. Okay. See you next Sunday. Lefty's, lefty's going to pay you. I, don't, I can't see that television too long. I'm wanted. 16th <laughs> place. 
I don't know. Six days of it. Yeah. Well, I don't know who, who got it. I got to check with him. Okay. Whatever it is, you still got an envelope coming. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Sonny, a pleasure. See Thank you, you next month at Columbian Lanes. Okay. Take care. Okay. And we'll be right back with another bowler in a moment. Okay, we are back, and I have to my right a gentleman that finished 15th place in this month's competition. Now, maybe his face looks a little familiar. He's been here before. He's made the finals. He finished second in a Scotch doubles tournament back at Sunset Lanes in December with his partner, Bobby Cloak. And I'll mention it again. He's also employed by the New Jersey Nets. And I know, Danny, the Nets are jamming. Yeah, we've been playing some good ball lately, although last night we, uh, we lost a tough one. We played good the first half, the second half. The guys just didn't come out and play, but, you know, it's, uh, we've matched our total wins of last year, and, yes. you know, hopefully we're yes. only going to get better. You know, it's, it's strange, Lefty, but this is supposed to be bowling, but every time I get involved with him, it ends up basketball. And I know your team is much improved. You matched your wins already, as you said. And you still have what? Uh, you still have about 30 games 30 left. 30 games left in the season. So get 20, 25 yeah, wins. looking at a possible 30 win season. Definitely. Which well, is not far from the playoff picture. No, not. But I, I'd rather not make the playoffs this year, to be honest with you, because the draft that is so draft. depth. Yeah. Uh, depth yeah. wise, it's unbelievable. And, you know, you've got to go in there. you got to be in the draft this year. To, uh, we do anyway to improve our club. Danny, okay. I want to again thank you for bowling. Thanks Lefty, how much does he have with us for? We got a $45 envelope for you, Dan. Thanks, Left. It's a pleasure as always, both. Right, buddy, we'll see you next month thank at you. Columbian Lanes. Okay, thank you. That was Danny Harris, and he finished 15th place this month. Lefty? Before we close, we'd like to give a word of cheer to uh, Tommy Hart, one of the bowlers yes. here at Sunset Lanes, yes. who is now over in Saudi Arabia, doing his thing for us. Give him hell, Tom. Yes, and, and Godspeed to all our troops over in Saudi Arabia, Lefty. As veterans, we can certainly appreciate what uh, the job has got to be done over there. Just one more note of interest before we bring on our next segment is we had a perfect game this week, Lefty, as you well know. Yesterday's qualifying, we had Mitch Bass, who bowled a perfect 300 game. So we tip our hat and offer our congratulations to Mitch Bass. And we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, with the Staten Island Bowling Club, and I have with me the alternate in today's competition, Mr. Rob Vinci. And Rob, you have lately, of late, been with the Staten Island Bowling Club. You've been somewhat of an enigma. You always seem to get to the first hurdle, but you've been having trouble lately clearing the first hurdle. Yeah, Mr. Ninth, I um, missed by pin today. Made a couple bad shots, missed a few spares. I really don't even know what to say on the camera, but. This is good, huh? Did you find your shot the same as it was in California, basically? Uh, basically. Maybe a board or two different, but it was pretty much the same shot. Made a couple bad mistakes, that's really it. We've got a field of eight bowlers. We've got Jerry Benedetto going against Carmine Peretti. And we've got Larry Barashiano against Louis Agnello. Bobby Spallone against Mike Orlando. And Bobby Capo bowling against Mike Mitch Weinberg. Who do you like? I like Carmine, actually. Carmine and maybe uh, Mitch, but I guess if I had a big one, I'd pick Carmine. Well, Carmine yeah. has been throwing the ball very throwing well. Throwing it really well. Yeah, he's been throwing the ball with a lot of authority and uh, certainly a force to be reckoned. But, you know, there are other guys out there. It's, there's a quality field out there. The eight bowlers, no question, is a lot of quality. Without a doubt. Okay, Rob, I thank you. Okay, I'll no see problem. you next month at Columbia Lanes. I'll be there. And that's it, and we'll be back with some more bowlers in a minute. Okay, we are back here at Sunset Lanes with the Staten Island Bowling Club, and I have the man with me that finished eighth place overall, Mike Orlando. Mike, I want to congratulate you. I know you renewed your membership after laying off all of last year. Yeah, I had a tough, uh, tough season bowling with work in a tough financial state, and then come back to the best you can. It's a shame I caught like one of the best balls on Staten Island, if not the East Coast. And I had him on the ropes in the second frame, but and I thought who was this that individual was uh, Bob Spallone. And I thought it was a skins game, and I guess he didn't take the good to that. You know, you finished eighth overall, not bad. It's your first yeah. finals. I know we'll see you next month at Columbia Lanes. Uh, you got it. Thank you, Doc. Thanks for bowling, Mike. Okay, seventh place this month belongs to 
This is one of the first five individuals that joined the club way back in 1988, and he's been a he's been a steady participant since then. Larry Barashiano. Larry, I want to congratulate you. Thank you. Place finish overall. Thank you. Uh, you lost to who the first game? Louis Agnelli. Louis Agnelli. Okay. Um, this game he's bowling. He's bowling Bobby Stallone, is it or no? No, Jerry, Jerry Benedetto. Benedetto. So that's a good match. Um, what happened? I mean, I know you made the cut, the first cut. I don't know. It's a bad luck, I guess. Well, you know, there's three obstacles. You made two. You got to match play, so maybe next month you'll clear that yeah, next Yeah, on to Colombian. And win the first game. I don't know where, so Larry, always a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, the man that finished sixth this month is another bowler that's been with us for a long period of time, Mr. Mitch Weinberg. Mitch, I want to congratulate you. Sixth place, not bad, buddy. Had a nice finish. Better luck next time. Well, who did you lose to the first game? Uh, Bobby Capo. Bobby Capo, the lefty. He's got a little advantage. You know, he bowls over here in league competition. He's a little more familiar with the shot. Uh, I had a little trouble adjusting. But, you know, I'll just come out next time and well, do my and best next time. I know, you, I know you had a 289. Yeah. And you needed every one of them because you just did sneak in with that. Yeah, I got a couple of breaks and, you know, it happened. Okay, buddy. I want to thank you. See you next month at Columbia. Thanks. Fifth place this month belongs to none other than Mr. Carmine Proetti. Carmine, I know you're pressed for time because you got to deliver baby, yes, but I do, do want to take two minutes of your valuable time. No, that's okay. Fifth place overall, you lost a very, very tough first game to Jerry Benedetto, went down yes. to the tenth frame. It's not easy to throw a double under those conditions. No. Not at all. No. It was a good game. He threw a lot of strikes. We both made two mistakes, but everything else was in the in the pocket. We carried. We didn't have to worry about the corner fins. But a relatively good shot and a good competition. I, I've watched you ball the last two or three months, and, I, and I've got to admit that you're always a good quality contender. Thank you you. seem to be throwing ball so much better with a lot more authority. It'll seem to have a lot more confidence in your game of late. Well, definitely. Uh, I've been practicing and uh, finally learned how to make a 10 pin, so that gives me a lot more confidence. So if I leave him, I don't have to worry about missing him. Come on, we got four bowlers left. We got Stallone against Capel, lefty on righty, and we got Benedetto against Louis Agnello. Who do you like? Well, if there's not too much handicap involved, I think uh, the scratch balls might have the edge. Of course, they can make the spares and uh, see what happens after that. Okay, I like that evasive miss. Yeah. That evasive answer is great. I want to thank okay. you, Carmine, very you. much. Thank we'll you. see you next month, Columbia Lane. Thank you. Okay, we are now down to four bowlers. We have Bobby Capel, a lefty, going against Bobby Spallone, who is uh, a right-handed bowler. And the other match features Louis Agnello, who won last month at Hudson Bayonne. And he's going up against Jerry Benedetto, another lefty. Now, the winner of that, those two games will bowl one another for the title and the right to rep represent Sunset Lanes in the Tournament of Champions. And we will bring you that match in a minute. We are back here at Sunset Lanes with the Staten Island Bowling Club, and I have with me the bowlers that finished third and fourth place this month at Sunset Lanes. Fourth place this month, fourth place this month belongs to a man that is the defending champion in the Staten Island Singles Classic, Mr. Bobby Spallone. Rob, I want to congratulate you. First of all, I watched you in qualifying. First of all, you get only five pins. Qualifying, you come out of the gate with a 180 game. Most bowlers at that point would have quit, but you just kept going. You made it over the first hurdle. You made it to the top eight in the seventh seed. You managed to win the first game, and then you, you really ran into a bug saw. Well, uh, the conditions weren't that easy. I mean, the uh, shot was good, but you had to throw the ball good to score well. And I seen guys struggling, so when I shot the 189, I just, you know, kept my head and uh, kept continuing. I wound up shooting a 220 after that. I made it. I shot 240 in the top eight. Then I ran into a little trouble myself. I didn't throw the ball good, like I said, and I, I didn't score. I think you lost your concentration. That's the impression I got from watching it. Uh, I don't know. I, I just didn't throw the ball good. I got no excuse. If I threw the ball good, I don't know if I would have won because Bobby K. Ball was a good game. Now, the good news I got for you, in addition to the 275 that you won, you know those five pins you had? They're gone. <laughs> <laughs> but good things happen to a guy like yourself because you're capable of bowling with zero. Obviously, you've proven that over the course of time. I mean, 226, you had the highest average over in, the, in, the, in New York last year. So that speaks for itself. 
you know, I, I just like the bowling glove. It's competitive, you know, and uh, it's a challenge. So and I, and I, want I enjoy you to, it. I got one more question for you while I got you. I just want you to plug the tournament that you're running at Rainbow. Okay, it's a, it's a scratch tournament. It's similar to the uh, Honky in Cincinnati. Uh, it's a $250 entry fee. It's $10,000 for first place. Uh, I have uh, plenty of flies I'm giving out, so if the guys are interested, just call me at Rainbow Lanes, and I'll be glad to give them more give information. The date, time. the date is April 14th. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Uh, what are we looking? We got a lot of free entries, or right now I have about 50 guys that uh, gave me a deposit, and uh, I expect a lot more guys to come in the last month, uh, especially the guys from Long Island and Connecticut and Jersey. How much of a deposit do you need? Hundred dollar deposit. Okay, very good. And that's on April. April fourteenth. It's a Sunday at eleven a.m. Eleven a.m. Right. So that's really an all-day thing, I was thinking, right? Uh, yeah, it should la last about maybe like five hours. Very good, sir. Now you're going to hang out with me. Pick up your, your my co-host, your boss. All right. Who's under the weather at the Yeah, he's sick. He's feel good. Okay, Robert, right, man, always a pleasure, buddy. Much. We'll see you next month at Columbia. Third place here at Sunset Lanes belonged to a man. He's been in the winner's circle himself. He went over at Showboat Lanes in Atlantic City last year. He was in our Tournament of Champions last year. And I never trust him when he's behind my back. But third place is worth $400. Lefty Jerry Benedetto. Jerry, I want to congratulate you for third place. Um, you ran into a tough competitor. And the, and the first game was a nice match. Yeah. That was a match. Uh, that was a match to win. Uh, our combine, uh, myself, came right down to the 12th yeah. frame. Which, right which is how it should be with right. two quality bowlers like that. And the next game, you bowled who? I bowled. Uh, you bowled Louis. Yeah, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm bad with names. Yeah, okay, we should do that. That's the game. <laughs> so um, Louis beat you. Louis, you know, won last month at Hudson Bay Home. Well, he's looking for a second consecutive title. He's already seated in the TFC. Right. Lefty, I know you got some money for Jerry. Second, second place, uh, third place, right? I'm sorry. Jerry, again, we'll see you in the winner's circle. Thank you. What uh, next stop? Uh, Columbia, Lane. Columbia Lane. Be there. You might hit it then. Right? 400 ain't bad for third, Jeff. Yeah. A pleasure, my friend. We'll see you next month. Next month, we move on to Columbian Lanes. We start there to March 16th. And our cable cast finals are scheduled for the 24th of March. And the month of April will be filled by my 14th annual Staten Island Singles Classic. And that will take place at Country Lanes. We now have two bowlers remaining. We have Bobby Kafel, and he'll be bowling against Louis Agnello. And the winner will go on to the TFC and represent Sunset Lanes. Now, Bobby Kafel will be bowling with a 24-pin handicap, and Louis Agnello will be bowling with a 26-pin handicap. So it's, it's basically a scratch match. Bobby Kafel has been in a winner's circle before. He won at Rainbow Lanes last year, so he too is in the TFC, so they both know what it takes to win. And we're gonna bring you that match right now. Okay, Bobby Spallone, we're ready to start the championship match. That features Louis Agnello against Bobby Kafel. And the winner will go on and represent Sunset Lanes in a tournament of champions. Uh, Bobby, I think, is gonna start. So when, Bobby, when Bobby's ready, we'll get the match underway. Okay? Bobby, as I had mentioned earlier, Bobby Cable is bowling with a 24-pin handicap, and Louis Agnello is bowling with a 26-pin handicap. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, I know you were in the finals today. Okay, uh, I want to explain about the lane condition here. If you notice, the two bowlers that made the top, uh, the top two pretty much go down and in with their shot. They're both straight-up bowlers. The guys that had trouble were the guys that circled the head area because if you swung it out, the ball hung out. If you, went up, if you went up early, the ball hooked early. So it was the guy that went straight down the lane with the boards and kept through the shot that scored well. And that's what you got here right now. You know, Bobby Cable is a house bowler over here. He's always a force to be reckoned with in his house. He's very, very tough to beat over here. Well, I think he's going to have an edge with that because, like you said, he bowls here twice a week. He knows the condition. Uh, and I bowled against him, and uh, he stayed clean. He shot 215. He, all he did was have nine spare or strikes, so he's going to be tough. You know, he's, a, he's a quality spare shooter, Bobby, which is very key in a house like this because you don't throw a lot of strikes. Definitely, I agree. I definitely agree with that. 
And Louis, Louis Agnello was looking for a second consecutive title. He won at Hudson Bay on just last month, and he's really improved his game twofold since he's joined the club. Definitely. When I first met Louis about four or five years ago, uh, he improved a lot over you know over that four or five year period. Uh, he's got different equipment now. He only had one ball, so that helps, and uh, he's learning the game. You know. And again, he's pretty good spare shooter also. Yes, yes. you know, as we said, that's a key over in this at Sunset Lanes here. And they both open with spares. And Louis will be towing the line for frame number two on lane number five. And again, Louis will be getting two pins from Bobby Cato. It should be a good match, Donnie. It's pretty even. I'm looking forward to a good match. And I think, Bobby, it may come down again to who performs the best in the tenth frame. And who stays clean? Doesn't have an open frame. Very, it makes very, this very, very important. Now, if you notice on that shot, Louis going down the boards. He's not going out and he's not going up. He's going down the boards, letting the back end take the ball into the pocket. Did you say he stole that strike? Yeah, he didn't come out of that ball, you know, great, but he, he had the direction, and that's the key, the direction of the ball, and that's why he got a strike. That was a good shot by Bobby. And down the boards, trip to six. I mean, there's no, nobody bowls in this house with more confidence than Bobby Capel. He's a, he's a three-time-a-week bowler over in this establishment, so again, he's going to be very tough, and he knows what he has to do to win. Well, that's a big edge, Donnie. When you're bowling in the house, you feel comfortable, the atmosphere, or the lane conditions. That, you know, you get to feel very comfortable, and it's like uh, you just get up on the line and you're just throwing the ball. You're not thinking about anything. See what he said he has to do to win. He's got to concentrate and don't push the ball. Another good shot by Bobby. Gives him a double. He has 44 in the first with his handicap, with a double up in the second and third. Louis has to try to answer the call and come back with a double of his own. Well, I wouldn't say. I, I'd just say that Louis would have to just keep his. That was an excellent shot by Beautiful Louis. Shot. Excellent Beautiful shot. shot. I think he learned something from lane five when he didn't come out of the ball properly. Right. He threw that ball with a lot of authority. But this is not going to be a striking match, Donnie. Right now they threw a double, but who, like I said, who's going to stay clean is going to win this match. Louis said in order to win today, Bobby, he has to bowl his best. And up to this point, he's certainly been doing that, and you, you can attest to that. Looks good. Looks good. See how he's going straight down those boards? Ball's going right in the pocket. walking right in from. Throwing the Louis ball good. I tell you, Louis's hot right now. He won your tournament last yeah. month. He yeah. might win this one. Yeah. He's, he's bowling well, and the way he's bowling right now, it looks the only thing can stop Louis for your wrap. He seems loose, he's throwing the ball, like, you know, very loose. You know, getting that first win is always big. That was that a good shot game. by Bobby. Oh. And he carries the five off the wall. These guys are surprising me, they're throwing strikes here. There and a triple, which leaves Louie with a two-pin lead, which is the handicap. This is a seesaw match similar to that Staten Island Singles Classic we witnessed in April of last year. You and a young man by the name of Jeff Sherry. I got a lot of gray hair since that match, Donnie. <laughs> I have a lot less hair <laughs> since that match. Ooh. Bobby, what That happened? was a fine shot, by. He almost got it. The pin just went over and tapped it. He almost fell. That was a fine shot. That was just a bad break. He got a solid now, seven. Does he make an adjustment for that, or does he continue throwing the ball the way he is? No, the way the way the lanes are, I wouldn't make any adjustments. I would just look to hit the pocket, get a nine like he's got, make the spare, and stay clean. He make the spare, right. absolutely. Have to make the spare. Which looks like he's got it. This isn't a this isn't a condition, Donnie, where you got to make a slight adjustment to look to carry because if you don't carry, you're going to lose. This condition here, you, all you got to do is stay in the pocket. Eight out of ten shots, stay clean, make your spares, and you should come out the winner. Oh, Louie got a break there. That time he took his arm away from his body a little bit, and he pulled the shot, and it went left, and he got a good break off the wall and knocked out that ten. Have you ever heard of fate? Yeah, that fate. That strike may mean something. 
They definitely play spot and ball, and believe me. Wow. This gives him a 13 10 lead with that strike. Now, let's see if he comes back with a good one. That's a good shot. And that time yeah. he didn't carry the seven. But see, things like that, Don, he turned the match around. Absolutely. Bobby K. Phil threw a real good shot. He got a solid seven thing. Louis threw, you know, a little bad shot, got away with a win, you know, on the over, and he got the strike. And that could be the difference in the match. Looks like Louis got it. Picks up the spare. Louis is now leading by 12 pins over Bobby Cape. Well, this game's far from over. Oh, long way to go. But the important thing is they, ma they maintained their composure. Louis did after throwing a seventh in. As and he came back with a good shot. Right, exactly. Another good shot by Bobby. Solid strike. Hey, hey, Bobby Cahill's throwing the ball, ball very well. He's throwing the ball very well. I told you I bowled against him. I know he's throwing the ball well. He's still trailing by 12 pins. Working on a strike in the sixth. 143 in a, in a fifth with a strike for Louis 155 in a fifth with a spare. Well, right now the difference is that fifth frame. Bobby yeah. stole yeah. seven and Louis got yeah. the lucky break. And the one that Louis stole. Because it could have been 12 pins the other way. Looks like really a good shot. Well, that was really a beautiful oh, shot by Bobby. Beautiful oh, more shot. confidence than you can imagine. He's really rolling the ball good. He's going to reduce it to two pins again, Bobby. That was a big double. You know, he could have folded there. No, he, and he came he, right he back with two beautiful yeah. shots. Louis Agnello has been bowling 10 years. And I know you bowl with him at Country Links. On yeah, Sunday we bowl in the Sunday Night Mixed League. That's a good shot by Louis. Wow. Still staring at that same two hey, These guys are determined to win this game. And what were you telling me about not throwing strike? Some profit you are. I know. But they're doing what I did say. They're both going down the boards. Yeah. They're both yeah. keeping the ball in play. And that was Which the key what you here. Have to do over here. Right. right. That Absolutely. was the key. Absolutely. You have to concede that you're going to be shooting spares. So right. you want to make e makeable spares on your first ball. That time you pulled up a little. Yeah. yeah he caught a break. He broke up the split. They're up. We'll give him 195 in this, in this seven with this handicap. Bobby Kayfield's on a double, so if he gets a strike, he can take, take a lead. Eight, lead. This isn't an easy spare, Don. Not at all. Not at all. And the later in the game, the more difficult it becomes. He's got to get up. He's got to cover it. He covered it perfect. Well, these guys ain't going to miss that many spares because they do go straight with the ball. And the straighter you go at the spares, the better off you are. Well, as Mr. Simonelli would say, we have a match. And it may well be who performs the best in the 10th frame. So far, both guys are staying clean. That was another fine shot wow. by Bobby. Yeah, he's going very well, yes, Bobby. Well, now the match is seven pins. Yep. He chose a strike here. It's very big because he can shut out uh, Louis if he doesn't double. Well, now is the testing time. Right here is the testing time. Frame number nine, Sunset Wings, the Staten Island Bowling Club. Coming up high. Coming up high. By that time, eight. he pushed the ball a little bit. And that's why he went through the big. He didn't go through the shot. He can't try to aim the ball, and it went high. But he got a break. You know, he, got, he got eight. He didn't get a split. And he, like I said, he's making a spin, so he should cover this. Looking at a six-pin lead. Bobby K. Wide. The ball stuff in lane. All right, Bobby. We're going to have a little bit of a little bit of a delay here while we're waiting for him to send his ball back. Now, Bobby, this could work for or against Bobby K. For one, because now he has time to think about making a spin. Because he was in his rhythm, he was bowling the ball well, and now he has to wait. Well, he's pretty disappointed. I think, uh, I don't think it'll affect him. I think he should just go up there, concentrate, make the spin. And he knows what he has to do. Right. 
Again, 6'10", not an easy spare this late in the game. Oh, he got a break there with the fin off the wall. And the crowd responds accordingly. All right, Louis, the ball's in Louis' court right now because yes. he's going to finish here in the ninth and tenth frame. If he throws a triple, he can shut out Bobby Capel. So everything is in his hands right now. It's no fun to lose when you're sitting on the bench. They pulled that he pulled shot. That ball. Certainly did. I, th I thought he might steal it, though, I'll be honest with you. Got a lot of seven out of that. Okay, the match is nine pins. Spare is, spare is key here. Keeps him in the game. Not to make the spare. Oh, Not definitely. Make the spare. He misses the spare, then he's got a double and, and hope Bobby misses. Not to make the spare. Every ball could be the match at this point. He's got it covered. Ooh. Oh, he chopped the spare. Wow. He opened the door for Bobby Capo with that <laughs> bad break chop, Bobby. Yep. Well, the first ball was the... Uh, he lost it, left up a tough spare. He wound up with a bad break and chopping it. Now it's 20 pins. He has to strike here, otherwise the match is over. Looks like a good shot, Donnie. Good shot. Keeps him in the game. He's not going to go down easy, no, is he? he has to have this one. Going down like a champ. You know, if he, if he should be fortunate enough to win today, it'll only be the second time in our young history that we had a, a guy that went back-to-back -back titles. Jim Papio did that two years ago with victory and then it bowling on the green. So he's looking to step to that circle. Oh, he got a good break off the wall. You know, Donnie, we could have a tie here. It's, it's very possible. We could have a tie here. Very possible. All the wood here is very, very big because that'll force Bobby not only to make a mark, but he's got to have good wood. Eight. Gives him a 249. Gives him a 249. Bobby, if he spares, he's in the 260, the low 26, 261. We could have a tie here, Don. If he gets nine and a, and a miss, we have 249 tie. It must be you. It will be our first ever. This level of competition. That his knees are shaking right about now. I would just go through the basics, follow through with the shot. Nope. Wow. Uh, well, that time he went, he fell off a little bit off balance. His arm went left, and that's why the ball went left, and it didn't finish like it was finishing before. This is a tough spin. He's got the baby split. This is 310. This is all or nothing. Yeah, he has to make this. This is it. This is for the match. There can't be a tie here. Beautiful cover under that pressure. That was wow. some shot. Bobby, he needs one pin. He should thrust it right down the middle of the lane to be absolutely... Although he's not really... If he doesn't play that, that deep, deep board, he's... I would just... Uh, Play my regular strike shot. I would do nothing different. Just go right to the head thing. He only needs one thing. Which is that what a match. Ball away what a match. And stay behind the foul line. Mm. You said you don't have exciting handicap bowling at its best because here it is right here with the Staten Island bowling. Hey, Tony, these guys bowl two thirty scratch. Yes. Both of them. Yep. Competition at its best with the Staten Island bowling. That's a winner. There's the winner right there. And he finishes with a 259. A pressure pack 10th frame. Needed the 310. Promptly converted it and goes on to the winner's circle, Mr. Bobby Cato. And Rob, we're gonna we're gonna take a break and then we're gonna meet our runner-up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back at Sunset Lanes with the Staten Island Bowling Club. And this in the course of our young four-year history has got to be one of the more exciting finishes that we've ever had. We were looking at a possible tie game, 
and it was a pressure pack situation and our champion our latest champion was equal to the task but before we meet him let's just spend a few minutes with our runner up who was looking for his second consecutive title with the Staten Island Bowling Club a nice round of applause Louis Agnello Louis, I got to offer my congratulations. You were a winner at Hudson Bay on lanes. You come within one ball of winning your second consecutive title. Great match. Thank you. Thank you, Frame. Was that? Didn't put nothing on the ball. And that's, that's well, you know, had you won today, it would have been the second time in our history that we've had back-to-back -back winners. Jimmy Papio did it at Victory Lanes in Bowling on a Green two years ago. So you were looking to step to that elevation. However, you're still seated in the TSC, and that ain't bad. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm going to ask Loy to come up and present you with second place money, which I think is worth $700. That'll bring your annual earnings to $1,100, I believe, for the year. Loy, second place. Okay, well, I'm going to ask you to stay here while I bring up our winner, Bobby Kafel. Rob, you've been here before. You won at Rainbow Lanes last year which puts you to the TFC. You're going back to the TSC this year. In fact, both of you guys wouldn't be ironic if we had a rematch in the TSC. It'd be just great. He's a good baller. He's a tough, tough baller. It just uh, breaks one my way. Could have gone, could have gone either way. He's well, good. You know, you had that pressure pack situation. You needed that spare. You know you needed the spare. You were equal to the task, although you did let up a little bit on the first ball. I did. I, it, so was the tent. I said, all I don't need now is a split. And I got the split. And you talked yourself into it. And I talked myself into it, but uh, it's a 50-50 game. The man upstairs took care of me, my higher power. Today was certainly your day. I'm going to ask the house manager, Steady Eddie Sutton, to step forward, and he's going to do the honors with this month's trophy. Well, six weeks ago. Thank you. Six weeks ago, you told me you were going to win it. Just for you. You're I'm right. Telling. Give me six numbers next week. Right? I certainly will. There you go. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Lanes here are very good, the conditions are right, and uh, hopefully we'll be back here next year. Oh, definitely. Thank you. Thank the you. trophy, by the way, is donated by Sunset Lanes, and Eddie has promised me you will get a shirt for the TFC, so that when you're in the TFC, we know who you are. I just got one question I want to ask both of you before Lefty comes up and makes the presentation of first place money. Um, turning point in the game, if any. When he was on his strike and he got that seven count. Okay. And I and I threw in the triple. It was just a matter. It could have gone either way if I would have thrown a bad shot. It was just maybe from the seventh frame on. And he got tough at the end when he threw that triple. Yeah, he, he didn't go softly into his eye good night, as, uh, as the poem says. No, you don't, you don't look for that. You know, norm, the norm is that uh, I have a tendency to go a little fast up at the line, but he did everything right. It's just, you know, he would like to take that shot back and do it over again. I don't blame him. Louis, your turn That was the key to the game there. That ninth frame. Just rushed myself, and that was the end of it. Well, I got to tell you, both of you guys surprised me and Bobby Spallone. We had made several comments that we were looking for a lot of spares. And no sooner did we say it than you guys come out to shoot, and you both had a triple. So you guys are really equal to the match. You're both great, both of you. It's, it's a kind of a game you hate to see somebody lose. You had a pressure situation. You were equal to it. He had the same situation in the 10th frame. He was equal to it. So I think a round of applause is in line for both bowlers today. It's a shame one of them had to lose. Do you realize that these two fellows were the champs in the double? This no. is the... No, 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 no. Not these two? No. Bobby fired Louie. Louie wanted to bowl with Bobby, but Bobby said, no way. He said, I got somebody else, and he grabbed him and... Jimmy Gerbino was his partner, although Louis did participate with somebody else. Okay, Lefty. That's right. I, I like to get Lefty up here. Everybody knows Lefty. Lefty's going to do the honors. First place money. <clears throat> Bob, we meet again. We certainly do. Maple Lane and uh, Rainbow. Rainbow and, of course, the Tournament of Champions. Yes. Uh, we'll see you again at the Tournament of Champions. Hopefully. And this I hope we is, see you before that. This, oh, of course. <laughs> it's going to have to be there. This is uh, the prelude of the Tournament of Champions. Thank That's you. Your, 
I nice really, big check. I really appreciate this. $10,000. I know my wife will. <laughs> $1,000 for first place today. $1,000. I'm quite happy. One other thing. I, I dedicated this game for the uh, men and women of, in Saudi Arabia who are fighting for us right now. I put that down. It, that was another thing that really made me go today. If it's not for them, I wouldn't be here. Well, I think we all share the same feelings as far as Operation Desert Storm is concerned. So we, we all send our prayers out, certainly, to our troops over in uh, Saudi Arabia. Okay, I want to thank everybody for being here. I, I congratulate our champion and our runner-up on a match that was uh, certainly well-deserved of cable television. I want to remind everybody our next stop will take place at Columbian Lanes. That will start on the 16th of March. And the month of April will be filled by my 14th annual Staten Island Singles Classic. And Mr. Spallone will be there to defend his title, and he has already vowed that he is going to be our first ever two-time winner. So we can certainly look forward to that event. For all you people who are curious, Channel 24, every Friday at 5 o'clock and Sunday at 6 o'clock, you can watch your fellow bowlers. For those of you who want to join a club, go to your local bowling centers. Each center has applications. Just pick them up, fill them out. I know you see Lefty, he's out there. Myself, I'm always around. Of course, Loy and Matty Acavelli and our Secretary Treasurer, Nancy Peteroy, we're always available if we can help anybody. If you have any problems with anything in the game of bowling, Give us a call if we can help you. That's why we're here. Again, I want to thank everybody for participating, making Sunset another successful stop as it has been for every year. We look forward to seeing you all again next month at Columbian Lanes.